you don't feel comforted. But when you do like this, somewhere you feel I have it. It is just like when the water comes out of the faucet, the water starts to come from the tank, pipeline. It's a fresh water coming in. If faucet doesn't open, sometimes you uh, come home after one month, when you open the tap, how the water is? Stagnant. So when you keep giving, keep giving, you keep receiving. Same way, when people take advantage from you, you keep on getting it from God, from nature, from circumstances. And how you know there is no logic, like your children turn out to be good children. Other people's children turn out to be nasty. I had very close relative, I said, my, you know, I gave birth to the alligators. <laughs> It's children, you know, alligators. I don't know from where that thought came. But in other words, your children turn out to be good. There is a maybe it has something to do with the good actions you have been performed. There is no logic. Sometimes you are getting into accident. Last second, you just turn right way and you are safe from the accident. Sometimes you get such a bad accident. The car is total, nothing can, nothing you know, happen to you. Sometimes you have to make the life decision. You have no clue. You have no facts clear to you. And you just have to make the decision blindly. You have to go either way. You end up making the right decision. It's, oh, I got lucky. But maybe there is something more than luck. But according to their intelligence, Everybody wants to make good decisions. So how this turn out in the bad decision? Because there is something love, karma, which, which I have in the past life. See, in other words, it is a combination of both things. Your intelligence, as much, as much facts are clear to you, that is the intelligence you work out, but something to do with the, your, people call it luck. But it is, Somewhere the karma you have been accumulating in your life. In other words, that uh, like many times people say, this is not the time to do good actions. To, to, to those people who are like sorrowful because they are good people, this is a kind of, you know, you feel conciliation that my good actions will never ever go waste. Somewhere they will come back to me. What goes around comes around. That is the understanding we come. Now, you know why I am bringing it up that you might have heard that I don't know whether they brought out. I was in the vaulted center on 64th floor when um, on um, September 11, 2001, plane hit. I was in the north tower and other tower was hit later. We were in the building and it took us more than one and a half hours to come down. And five minutes after we came down, our tower collapsed. Whilst we were in the tower, other towers were hit. Then it even came down. We were still in our tower. We had to go through all kind of problems with the darkness, shaking up of the tower badly. Our stairs got blocked. One stairs got blocked. Other stairs broken, got broke. Then we had to go touch, change the third one. And we had to go through such a flow of water all kind of things, total darkness and the wires hanging on top of us, all kind of experience we had. And five minutes after we came out, we saw in the back, we are coming out, the ground is shaking, we look back, our tower is collapsing. We literally ran from there. We were so close, if the tower had toppled like that, we could have been under it. We were so close to that. Even. Nothing happened, of course, came down and all that. But next day, so many people were asking questions. One question they asked me that, look, how terrible people did. Now what you are going to do? And I want to just mention that I was very much connected with the Voltage Center because few years ago, I had developed Structural Integrity Inspection Program for the Voltage Center. The entire complex, I was the team leader and I had four or five engineers working for me. It took us one year. It was 
to create a program to inspect the every part of the every component of the building to see for deficiencies so that they could be rectified so that the life of the buildings could continue so because of this, so, so we had created that program so i knew every corner of the entire complex not only two towers the adjoining five more buildings so we had done the entire thing so people you know they knew that i know about the stuff also i was very much connected i still have a book the program we had developed now people are asking that what is your response response how you going to deal with and i was telling we have to stop the cycle of revenge today they are taking revenge tomorrow we take revenge then we take revenge what is the end people will keep getting killed we have to st start somewhere the process of healing process of forgiveness you know one thing very wonderful happened to me on that day you know this is how you work you how things work uh, in your mind i said i don't know who did it who i forgive i have no clue so what should i do who i forgive then i said to myself ram they have done so many bad things but how many bad things you have done in your life so on that day i said to myself ram i forgive you for all the bad things wrong things you have done in your life so i became light very very light on that day i say i don't have to be angry i could be light about my own self really i, I did not watch tv for the next 10 12 days not even one time i say i don't want to experience any negative and you could see that up till 13 year never ever any nightmares nothing because somewhere i feel that i forgive myself i became light and that is what i learned for future too that any time you see somebody doing something wrong forgive yourself for something you have done wrong rather than getting angry it works for me it keeps you light so second question people were asking me that you were so close to dying five minutes before the building collapsed you came out other tower was stuck later came down first your tower still there and five minutes after you came out it collapsed how close you were with the death how you felt about the fear what kind of fear you were going through and i really went back i noticed not in one second i was in fear and i wonder what could be the reason i never felt any fear the only thing i could really come up with because i was thinking of helping other people my own fear never materialized you know you must have seen in your life any time when you are trying to remove other people's sorrow and pain you forget about your own pain and sorrow isn't it so that's what happened to me too thinking of how i can help other people even though in the time of crisis you cannot help a lot anybody everybody is coming down the stairs you all know that we never ever use elevators in the time of crisis in the time of emergency because the electrical fear or any mechanical failure whatever can happen so we use the stairs so i was also coming down while everybody is rushing 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 let's go fast as possible way i will step back always watching people how they are feeling and any time i will see somebody distraught i will quietly bring them in front of me ladies particularly when you know when you are so long in any this kind of situation even little sound shakes you up you tremble get a shock so any time when i saw that they are losing it i quietly will go behind and i bring them in front of me it's not a big thing that they are two steps behind you and now you bring them in front of you but it was a lot for those people because somewhere they felt if they will get into problem this person will help them see that feeling 
We say what I find in the time of crisis, even little bit of your positive attitude, little bit of your help goes a long way. You get so many blessings from people. So that's what I felt. No fear. And other <coughs> the thing was about the karma. Like many times we think, people think, oh, when you are stuck with that kind of crisis, you should remember God. And what I felt was, actually when you are going through the troubles and all that, even you try to remember God, you cannot remember God. You might remember one second, immediately you go back to your, all the confusion and problems and everything. That time, your good karmas are the ones which really, all the good things you have been doing in your life, whatever benefits you did not get from those karma, they keep on getting accumulated and at the right moment they just bundle together you know, in the wholesale. Take you towards the right direction. You don't even know. And that is what my experience was. On that day I was not fearful at all of being a good person. I say, I am going to continue to do good action. Somewhere the good action will bring the good result. And that is how, how I felt. You had in your mind at that time that it will do good and it will come back to you good. See, at that time, the, these kind of things don't happen. You know, to, uh, you know, in the time of passage, these are very analytical things happen when you are in an easy going kind of thing. In those kind of things, your feet are working, you are, you are, you are uh, working, but Whatever is in you, that is what really comes out. But one wonderful thing I also want to share with you, you know how your body even responds. Yeah. I honestly tell you that I work hard. Like my average sleep is like four hours. Sometimes I sleep a little more, sometimes less. I never take any vitamins up till now. Constantly keep working and I think I am doing all right. So what I used to do, even I will work hard at the end of the day, I will always caress myself. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. You did wonderful. It's just like, you know, you use the horse for the whole day and at the end of the day you caressing the horse and the horse also shake up like that, I'm alright. I really was feeling that way that constantly the body is so happy with you. But as one, uh, one time it had happened, that I had severe pain in my back, very, very bad. I could not move around. And somebody came to me and said, Ram, how are you doing? I said, I am doing all right, but my back is killing me. It's so much pain, I cannot move, nothing. My back is so bad. I, I started talking like that. But all of a sudden I felt my back started talking to me. It said, for 50 years, I carried your weight. I never complained. <laughs> you never took care of me. You take care of your face and everything and your hair and everything. You never cared for me. You didn't even look at me. I never complained. And today I am in a little bit trouble and you are telling the whole world how terrible I am. <laughs> You know, immediately my hand went in the back. I said, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. You are very nice, very nice. I started to caress my back. And I am really, really giving love to my back. But the wonderful things happened was, after some time, the back pain disappeared. I am telling the reality. You know, that day I learned my pain was, only a messenger to tell me where the love is needed. So the pain told me, go give the love to your back. On that day, I really started to love my pain. Everybody condemns pain, right? Anybody loves pain? <laughs> so sometimes I find pain is a, a poor pain, is only a messenger telling what part of the body needs love and you start to condemn the pain. 
I find that if I love my pain, even the pain becomes sweet pain. <laughs> See, there is a bitter pain and sweet pain. Sweet pain is softer. It does not bother you. Even though it's the body is pain, but you are happy and comfortable. So this is where I really found, and it's not only bad, I had arthroscopic surgery on my knees. And somehow I was always <coughs> caressing my knees and very nice, very nice and all that. Within one week I started working. Even though I will limp along, they say it takes about 18 months actually to uh, get fully healed. But initial healing took place in about uh, seven days. So I was limping and doing things. I felt that my knee, uh, my knee was saying that you know you are doing all the good things. You keep doing good things. I will get along. I will limp along with you. Mm -hmm. So people will ask me, Ram, how's your knees? I said, knee is doing its own job. I am doing my job. We don't bother each other. <laughs> we are friends with each other. You know, what I am trying to say, these look very kind of, uh, you could call silly, you could call jovial or whatever, but there is a reality in that. I really felt that my caressing of the knee, talking, it helped tremendously. But what happened, why I am telling that in the World Tech Center, now this is the fact that even though I was limping along, doing things, but after 15-20 minutes, I had to lie down or sit down because it, does, it takes time. It starts to swell. And, uh, so, on that day, the World Tech Center, after I walked 15-20 minutes on the stairs, my <coughs> knees started to have pain. And I'm wondering what will happen because things are not even moving. I don't know how long it will take me. I cannot sit down over here. Forget about lying down. I cannot even stop. So what should I do? I was a little bit concerned, but some or another that nature, the habit which I had was of caress, excuse me, caressing my knee. I started, unknowingly I started caressing my knee and started talking. I know you are in a little bit pain, you are tired. Let's move a little bit more, let's move a little bit more, then we'll rest together. Like that, you know, you start to have this conversation. And now to my surprise that after 50, after some time, the pain disappeared on my knees. After that, I walked more than three hours on those knees. Even the young people's knee started to give up. My, pain, my knee never had pain. I'm telling you what, this is a fact. Up till now, I could have never done it. But that day it happened. So what I, I learned from that was that learn to love your body as it is. <coughs> Extend. So your body doesn't matter how it is. It is small, big, curly, you know, white, black, whatever way, crooked, all kind of problems. But this is the only body you have got. Learn to love it. The way it is, it carries you everywhere. You are able to speak through the mouth. You are able to see through your eyes. You can use the hands of the body. So learn to love. So my love for the body increased on that day. In other words, these were my, you know, like experience based. That how goodness, that means you are good to your body. You accept yourself as you are. Learn to forgive other people and all that. And also not be afraid of being a good person. Because from my experience, World Trade Center, nothing goes waste, what you do. So what happened? In um, 2009, the, whole, uh, the world population reached 7 billion. The United Nations came up here. And at that time, there was a cover story in Time magazine. Name was happiness is contagious. They gave example of the flu. How the flu spreads. You know, from one person, it spreads in the whole office. How people run away from each other when somebody has flu. But that's the negative side. They say happiness also 
it just spreads like that. You see, one person is happy, looking at the person, five, six people will become happy. Looking at that, five, six people, there may be 15, 20 people become happy. And then it goes in the layers, you know, next layer of 150, 200, 500, but it just keeps on moving. Facebook keeps on spreading. Uh, last year, Facebook did uh, a controversial experiment. Uh -huh. They try. Uh, uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, what uh, Facebook did was, I, I, of course, they did not tell the uh, Facebook users. Uh, what they did was, uh, they tried to. Um, Project, for example, for a few days, only happy news uh, on the on the friend page, feed of their page, mm -hmm. and uh, saw the reaction of who is the recipient of those who are postings in the wall, in the wall that people are posting some happiness. They will uh, also put a similar happy news, mm -hmm. and then they twist it. Uh, and another day, they will put some sad news or uh, negative thing, mm -hmm. and they they, uh, they were noticing that other people who are you seeing, they were trying to bring their negative, um, you know, news, and then they were posting it. So you know, it was controversial, but it kind of relates to what you. Yeah, mean. exactly. You know, this is the reality that when you are feeling love, when you are feeling happy, it increases your even physical energy. So what it was, they were mentioning that they gave example of that it is also like a, do, uh, domi, uh, what's a domino effect. They gave example in the pool table, you hit one ball, because all the balls are in the triangle, and you hit one ball, all the balls like, go everywhere. So that means hitting one ball, you create the domino effect. So that is where the thought came that see uh, exponential growth. If one seed creates hundreds of thousands of seeds in the nature, one cell of the virus creates millions of viruses. Same the atomic energy, that is when the atoms hit each other, a small portion of the atom gets converted into nuclear energy and the conversion factor is E is equal to mc square, Einstein's formula. So that means a tiny, tiny fraction of an atom can create millions time energy. So the thought was if the negative energy can work that way, why not positive? And that is where this thing, the happiness increase that you give. So it is just like that if one person gives happiness to somebody, the one who gives happiness increases, and other person, the one who gets it, will give to somebody else. So the one who is giving their level increases, the one who is receiving will pass on to somebody else. And if that continues, little by little, little by little, it will keep on spreading, keep on spreading, keep on spreading. Is there a possibility that as there is, when there is a critical mass is reached, there is a chain reaction of atomic energy? Could there be chain reaction of goodness and happiness if we reach that critical mass? You know, somewhere our heart says that is impossible. We have not seen it, but we could feel that there is a possibility. So that's what it was. We say, what could be the critical mass of goodness? And that is where the thought comes, there are 7 billion people. And if we can generate or perform collectively 7 billion good acts, maybe that will trigger the change in the world change, like you know, the whole change will happen. So that is where we came up with seven billion acts of goodness. That means that, you know, other example came to our mind was that look at the water, how the ripple effect of the water keeps grow, grow, grow. If something big hits it, it goes even higher and higher. And there could be a chance, there could be a tsunami of goodness, a tsunami of the water, people get drowned. Same thing can possibly happen to love, happiness, keep on increasing, keep on increasing, keep on increasing, and finally there could be tsunami of love and happiness. So that is on the basis of we created this uh, video. And what it shows that, you know, how the concept is, you know, of growth of the goodness and how we can work and what kind of good, uh, uh, good actions 
we can think of for you see that video and then I will take a couple of more minutes after that. <laughs>